Precognition, also called prescience, future vision or future sight, is a claimed psychic ability to see events in the future. There are many stories of people that have dreams about the future, which can either be disturbing, as they may foretell a disaster, or others, like the following case, where a man suddenly started dreaming about horse races. It is generally accepted that dreams represent a collection of thoughts, struggles, emotions, events, people, places, and symbols that are relevant to the dreamer in some way. Dreams can provide a lot of information about your present state of mind, where it is not uncommon for someone to wake from a dream with some unpleasant emotions or disappointment. But what about the people who, after a dream, were able to predict things that haven't happened yet? Precognitive dreams are any dreams that give you information about the future you wouldn't otherwise have. Some precognitive dreams have even given accurate descriptions of future winners of horse races. One of the most famous cases of precognitive dreams predicting the winners of horse races was an Irishman called John Godley. Whilst an undergraduate at Balliol College, Oxford, he awoke one morning on March 8, 1946, after dreaming that in the Saturday evening paper, he had read the racing results with the names of two horses on his mind, called Bindle and Juladin. Later that day, he went to the Randolph Hotel and met up with a friend called Richard Freeman, and after checking the Times newspaper, they saw that a horse called Bindle was running at Plumpton Races in East Sussex that afternoon. The letter checked in another newspaper called the Daily Express and saw that Juladin was running at Weatherby Races in West Yorkshire. John Godley was so excited that he told his friends, who also decided to place bets, and Godley also backed both horses, who, true to his premonition, won their races. Overall, Godley had won £100, which would have been a tidy sum in the 1940s. As expected, his dream and eventual winning had spread throughout the undergraduate community and people made many inquiries whether he had any more dreams. However, Godley became fearful because what if he'd had more dreams about horses and they did not win? He would go from being a local hero to a loser. A few weeks later, back in Ireland on Thursday the April the 4th, 1946, Godley had another dream where he was looking at a list of winners, but on awakening, the only name he could remember was Tubermore. He went down to breakfast and told his family about his latest dream, but because their house was many miles from the nearest shops, any newspaper would have arrived too late. Godley decided to call the local postmistress, who would often place bets for customers, and found that the closest name she could find was a horse called Tuba Rose, who was running at four o'clock in the Grand National at Aintree in Merseyside in northwest England. The family all agreed that the name was close enough, and all decided to back it. The later checked the BBC News at 6pm and found that Tuba Rose had won at 100 to 6, winning the family over 60 pounds. Now realising that his dreams of winning horse races were coming true, he began to take them seriously and decided to keep a record of his dreams when he returned to school at Oxford. On July the 28th, 1946, he had another amazing dream where he had rung his bookmaker from a telephone booth in the Randolph Hotel in Oxford where he asked him for the results of the last race. Gotti claimed that the dream was so vivid and realistic that he even sensed how stuffy it was in the phone booth. He was informed that a horse called Monumenta had won the race with the odds at 5 to 4. The following day, he checked the newspapers and found the closest name he could find was a horse called Mentorus, who was running that afternoon at Worcester Races in central England. He nevertheless decided to back the horse, and it won at 6 to 4. It would be another year before Godley would have another dream, and in the dream, he was at the actual race course and recognised the colours of one of the winners as those of the Gekwad of Baroda from India. He even recognised the jockey, who was an Australian called Edgar Britt. In the same dream, he could hear people shouting out the name The Bogey. The crowd noise was so loud in this dream that it actually woke Godley up. Excitedly, when he woke up, he checked the Times newspaper and discovered that the Gakwad of Baroda had entered a horse in the race called Baroda Squadron that was being ridden by Edgar Britt at Lingfield in Surrey that afternoon. In the next race, the favourite was a horse called the Brogue, which was as close as he could get to the horse called the Bogey in his dream. He told his girlfriend Angelica and friend Kenneth Harris about the dream. Before placing the bets, he decided to write a statement about his predictions to prove that he was not cheating and had it dated and witnessed by three people, and then placed the statement in an envelope where it was then sealed. 
the postmaster then officially stamped the envelope and placed it in the post office safe. He then placed a five pound wind double on both horses, where they both won again. After yet another successful bet following his dream, he was lucky enough to dream of two more winners, but he also dreamt of several losers. Because of his success, he was given the job of racing correspondent on the Daily Mirror, where he was inundated by hundreds of letters hoping to share his good fortune by giving them the name of Winning Horses. On January the 16th, 1949, he had yet another dream about a horse called Timocrat, which again won. It was not until nine years later in 1958 that he had another dream about a horse called Watman that had won the Grand National. On checking the papers, the closest he could find was a horse called Mr. Watt. The odds of this horse winning were much different from his other dreams, which were mostly around 18 to 1. The odds for this horse were 66 to 1. Godley was in Paris when he had the dream, and by the time he checked the Time newspaper, the odds had shortened and were now 18 to 1. He then rang his bookmaker and placed a bet of £25 to win. Later that day, he found that Mr. Watt had won the race, and Godley had won £450. It was the largest amount he had ever won since betting on his dreams. All in all, Godley had no idea why he suddenly acquired such a gift, as before he started dreaming about winning horses, he was only slightly interested in horse racing. The most unusual feature of his dreams was that he always dreamed of reading or hearing about the results of races, but never actually saw the actual races in his dream. After his huge win in 1958, his powers appeared to have deserted him. 